Mountain View. Welcome to the Mountain View Church of Christ. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And now, open your heart and receive the inspired word, the spoken word, the engrafted word, the living word. Let the body of Christ say amen. Let the body of Christ say amen again. It's good to see you all at The View. It's always uh, indeed a privilege and an honor to be here with you all. Uh, I I wish it wasn't on these circumstances. Uh, Your minister, my friend, the the very fine angel of this house is sick. But what I love about God is that God likes to do things more than once, Mama Burnett. And see, I remember somewhere in Scripture that when Jesus was weary and, and, and was facing death, that he went up to the mountain to pray. And, and in the gospel, according to Luke, it says that the angels came down and ministered unto him. I'm glad that God likes to do things more than once. Uh, Because I know we're praying prayers up, but I'm glad that God is sending his angels down in order to touch the angel of this house. Uh, Let's keep him in prayer. Uh, Me and Brother Hamilton have been speaking about some things over the last couple of months about some things that we're doing in Plano, and and he, we were planning on me coming to talk to you all later on. Uh, But because of this, we said, well, we might as well go ahead and start sooner than later. So, so, uh, I pray the message does not offend anyone today. But if it does, then that means God meant for you to be offended. And if that's the case, then all we can do is ask you to take it up with God. But all I want to do is look at God's word. See, we've been doing a series entitled Discovering the Teachings of Jesus, and we've been looking at all of the words of Christ in red. You understand what I'm talking about? R-E-D. Because sometimes we fail to realize and we fail to implement the things in red, but we'll try to implement other things. We forget that everything that the apostles taught was just a furtherance of what they were taught by Christ. The apostles did not teach anything new. They taught what Jesus told them to teach. So in order for us to truly get an accurate understanding of even what the apostles taught, we need to go back to the source. And the source is always Jesus. We need to make sure that we truly understand and comprehend the things that are in red. Why? Because if not, then we will not truly be able to implement the apostles' teaching and doctrines in an effective and efficient way. But we will actually misquote and take out of context the things that they have said. Why? Because we think what they have said contradicts what Jesus has said. But if what the apostles say contradict what Jesus has said, then that can't be God's word. Because there is no contradiction from Genesis to Revelations. It is all one story, his story, in order to help us get right back in the right relationship with him. Can I get an amen? Now, I'm not going to be long because as soon as I finish, I got to get on the road, go to Plano, amen, and they're going to be waiting on me to preach, amen, in Plano uh, at our 1045 service. But there is a word from God. Turn to Matthew chapter 25. I'm just going to read the first few verses Uh, it's already been read in your hearing, but Matthew chapter 25, I'm going to read verses 31, 32, and 33. From the English Standard Version of God's Word, it says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep 
from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. I want to speak to you briefly this morning as the Spirit of the Lord shall lead me on the topic, the body. The body. In October of 2010, I was in Gilmer, Texas, Upshur County, East Texas, the Piney Woods. Amen. Y'all don't act like y'all lived in the city all y'all life now. Amen. And I was up there for an event called the Yamboree. The Yamboree begins as soon as the state fair ends here. Now, I don't like going to the state fair because it be too many folk, too many folk acting crazy. Somebody want to shoot, then running and all that mess. I don't have time for all that. So I wait. to go to Gilmer, Texas for the Yamboree where I get my turkey leg, my sausages on a stick, amen, you know, make it plural, amen, (laughs) my candy apple, my nachos, my funnel cake, uh, my homemade hamburger, my cotton candy, my corn dogs, uh, I don't do the fried Twinkies. I don't do the fried Twinkies. Uh, but I do fried ice cream. Amen. They had fried Snickers this last year. Amen. I did a fried Snicker. Amen. Never had that before. It was actually good, though. Uh, I mean, I, I go to eat. It's my weekend off. I, I, I try not to preach that weekend because, I mean, I just want to kick it with the family because my mama and dad are from Gilm. I just go to relax chill. It's just a good family weekend to spend with them. But in October 2010, while I'm there, literally eating a turkey leg. Don't let the size food. I received a call from another dear friend of mine. The minister at the Central Point Church of Christ, Brother Rodney Dooley. And he said, I need you to preach for me on tomorrow because it is our anniversary, 10 years. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of, you know, last minute. I was like, I'm out of town with family and, you know, trying to spend time with them. And he says, "I, I need you to come because I got a call that Brother Cornelius Crenshaw's son had just been in a bad motorcycle accident where he was on an overpass and came off. And now he is quadriplegic. He can't move anything from the neck down. See, it didn't matter that I was trying to spend time with family. It didn't matter that I was up there eating food. It didn't matter that it was my vacation weekend. It didn't matter that it was the weekend that I was not supposed to preach. Why? Because, just not because my friend called me, Brother Doodley, but also I felt the pain from another angel of one of God's houses. who felt his son's pain in not being able to move. There was no choice. I had to come back to preach. But see, I didn't know much about being a quadriplegic. And I'm the type of person that does not like to not know something, especially when folk are talking to me about it. See, a quadriplegic is paralysis of the body from the neck down. 
See, a person who is a quadriplegic or has tetraplegia has paralysis of all four limbs. That means they can't move their hands, their wrists, their arms, their feet, their ankles, their legs, their thighs. They can't move any part of the body from the neck down. See, paralysis from the neck down is usually caused by a broken spinal cord or some form of spinal cord injury in the upper cervical area. See, this spinal cord injury may be acute or gradual in onset, depending on the nature of the lacerations. Yet in the end, the body will have the same outcome, church. No motion. See, although the most obvious symptom is impairment to the limbs, functioning is also impaired in the torso. This can mean a loss or impairment of controlling the bowel and the bladder, your sexual function, your digestion, breathing, and other autonomic functions. See, furthermore, sensation is usually impaired in affected areas. This can mani be manifested as numbness, reduced sensation, or burning. See, secondarily, because of their depressed functioning and immobility, quadriplegics are often more vulnerable to pressure sores, to fractures, to frozen joints, to respiratory complications and infections, and deep vein thrombosis and cardiovascular diseases. Because you are a quadriplegic, you are now able to get sicknesses that at one point, you would not get. Okay, okay. As a quadriplegic, the mind is telling you to do one thing. But the body doesn't do. Okay, y'all looking at me like y'all know what I'm talking about. The mind tells my left arm to wave like a fool. But if I'm telling my hand to wave and it just sits here, then my hand is not doing what the mind, what the head, what the brain has told it to do. See, severity depends on both the level at which the spinal cord is injured and the extent of the injury. See, are we spiritually quadriplegic church? Okay, let, let me just go on and keep it real. We are spiritually quadriplegic. Why? Because the things that the head has told the body to do, the body does not want to do. The things that the head has told the body to do, the body thinks that it should not do. The things that the head has told the body to do, we try to deliberate, have a meeting on, and go out and vote on if we should do. It does not matter whether the body wants to do or not do something. If the head says to do it, then you sure enough better do it. We need to get things understood in the body of Christ. We need to stop fussing, cussing, and complaining and saying that we're starting to act like what other folk are doing when in reality they doing what we should have been doing. See, I know I'm going to offend some of y'all today. And God wanted you offended. I'm still going to be back sometime in the future. I ain't worried about you. We must understand that it is not about what we want to do, how we think, what we feel like. It's about what the brain, what the head, what Jesus Christ himself has commanded us to do. But we have gotten things twisted and confused, and we're so worried about what the body looks like that we're not actually working and being the hands and the feet and the thighs and the working body that God has called us to be. Okay, okay. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm going to go and preach this, and then I'm going to show y'all some stuff. See, see, Jesus used sheep and goats to picture 
the division between believers and unbelievers. See, sheep and goats must be understood as being separate and not equal. Some of y'all go catch that later. Y'all remember separate but equal? That really wasn't equal. The, 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 the sheep and the goats are separate and they still not equal. See, sheep and goats often grazed together but were separated at night because the goats needed a warm shelter at night. Why? Because their coats were not nearly as thick as those as sheep, while sheep preferred to be out in the open air. See, some of y'all missed y'all shout right there. See, the reason why God really knows if you are a sheep or a goat is how thick your skin is, how thick your wool is. See, some of us can't make it in the cold and that lets me know that you a goat and not a sheep. Some of us can't make it in the cold because we fail to realize that weeping may endure for the night but joy cometh in the morning so sheep don't matter going through a storm don't matter going through hell in this world don't matter going through hell in your home don't matter going through hell on your job why because you know in the end God is still gonna be there to protect you there's a difference in sheep and goat Okay, some of y'all acting like this morning. See, some of y'all didn't sing this morning. Why? Because your favorite song leader wasn't singing. They ain't sing your favorite song. Some of y'all ain't going to say amen during this sermon. Why? Because your preacher ain't here, but your preacher sent another preacher here to preach the same good news message of Jesus Christ. Some of y'all won't learn nothing in Bible class. Why? Because your Sunday school teacher ain't the one you like of teaching. So you don't want to ever learn that. All that does is let me know you a goat. Why? Because you got to have a certain shelter around you in order to keep you warm. God don't need no goats. God needs some sheep. Folk who going through everything, fussing, cussing, complaining at church, murmuring, backbiting, doing all acts of malice, guile, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking, you ain't nothing but a goat. Blood pressure go down, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Act like I still ain't got to do two more sermons today, Lord have mercy. I'm serious, y'all. We let some of the most minute things divide us. See, God is going to separate the sheep from the goat. And if you don't know if you're a sheep or a goat, just look and see if you can endure the cold. See, God always likes using two things to help us to understand, and the two items are normally always together until it's time to separate them so you can see the truth from the false. See, in the parable of the wheat and the weeds, Jesus had talked about a final separation at the last judgment. The sheep and the goats grazed together, the wheat and the weeds grew together. At the end, however, Jesus the judge will separate people from one another. While all nations are before him, he will separate individuals individuals for each individual is responsible for their own salvation. Don't try to get to heaven on your mama or your daddy's coattail, on big mama's coattail, me, ma's, nana, grandpa, papa, whoever it is you want to call them, your preacher, the elder, the deacon, whoever the leading brethren is, whatever it is you got that tickles your fancy. You go stand before God all by yourself. So you need to find out, are you a sheep or a goat? See, the gathering and separating part is the shepherd's duties. Further united the concept of the Son of Man is both the shepherd and the judge. So why are we trying to judge? Jesus said, this is my role. Now, I know we're supposed to be Christ-like, but remember, you're not Christ. Those are two different things. Okay, we, we, we got to look, look at the list. He says, look at the list, y'all. There's only one list. The left and the right list is still one. They only say, they say the same thing. Preacher, what are you talking about? 
It includes feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty, showing hospitality to visitors, clothing the naked, and visiting the sick and the imprisoned. That is the list. It is one list. Now, if you do these things or don't do these things, that's what make you a sheep or a goat. That sounds kind of simplistic. It, it's quite interesting that when you study the things that Jesus has said, you don't need to know Greek or Hebrew. You don't need a Bible dictionary or a biblical thesaurus. You don't need all those things. Jesus makes it plain, Jane, simple, but some of us still ain't getting it. You don't have to have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a Ph.D., or an E.D.D., or an M.D., or an L.L.D. You ain't got to have none of those degrees. It is quite simple. Feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, showing hospitality to the visitors, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and the imprisoned. I, it, it. Yes, sir. That's it. If you do it, you're a sheep. If you don't, you're a goat. Some of y'all just found out which one you are. See, now the list is not exhaustive. Instead, it represents all types of good deeds. The parable is not teaching, though, that salvation is by good deeds, but evidence of salvation is through good deeds. Because I am saved, I should find joy in doing good deeds. Realize something that is not even based off your kindness to the king, to the one who will let you in, to the one who is in control, but it is actually to his people. Why? Because the king don't need you to feed. Them. The king don't need you to give them water. The king doesn't need you to clothe them. And the king shown up ain't locked up no more. Not even in a borrowed tomb. He's sitting at the right hand throne of God. So he don't need no visitation from you. He said, I need you to do this to all my people. <laughs> this is what the head said to the body. See, some of us fail to realize the sin noted by the king is not the person doing evil. Yeah. But in actuality, it is the failure of the person to do good. Yeah. Come on, See, the apostle James wrote, anyone then who knows uh, the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. See, some folk go miss heaven not because of evil they do, but because they don't do good works to God's people. I would hate to miss heaven. Not because I done killed somebody. Not because I done broke into somebody's house. Not because you live in a sexual promiscuous life. Not because you do a malice, guile, hypocrisy, envy, all this other mess, backbiting, slandering, gossiping on church folk, gossiping on everybody else, plotting and planning to get folk fired, kicked out the church, elder set down, deacon set down, preacher fired. I ain't talking about it, but you go burn in hell because you don't want to do good. See, that lets you know everybody go burn ain't burning because they do wrong. But some folk go burn because they don't want to do. Right. See, are we tired of being spiritually quadriplegic? Do we want to start doing what the head has commanded the body to do? If not, then let's stop acting like we are the body. Don't call yourself the body of Christ, the church of Christ. If you ain't going to do what the head said to do, it ain't about if you want to do it. It ain't about if I want to go preach somewhere, go teach somewhere, drive the plane over every day even though I live 45 minutes away. It ain't about if I want to work with the young men from Southwestern Christian College and let them do an intern in my church. It ain't about if I want to work with somebody who want to become a song leader and help them by letting them lead singing at Avenue. It ain't about if I want to go out and go feed the hungry, go visit the sick, go to the nurse. It ain't about what I want to do. If you want to do what you want to do in your own church, then go ahead and die. Get up in three days, and we'll name the church after you. But if you can't do that, then just do what the head said do. It's simple. It don't take rocket science. 
are we willing to do it? That's the question you got to ask yourself. See, the problem is with our churches, Too many of our churches are churches and not the body of Christ. Too many of our churches are churches and not Christians. Pops, they looking at me strange. Lord have mercy. Why? Because we more worried about looking at the outside, then what we're doing, okay. Some of y'all don't like looking at the head and the body. Y'all know Jesus always talks about fig trees. I mean, he talks about fig trees all throughout the New Testament. And every time he talks about fig trees, normally the fig tree is not doing what the fig tree is supposed to do. And so he says it's either going to be cut down and burned, or he makes it wither away, or the, the fig tree is just destroyed. Why is the fig tree always destroyed? Because it's not producing fruit. It ain't destroyed because it got brown leaves and not green leaves. It ain't destroyed because its leaf has three points instead of five points. It's destroyed because it don't produce. Okay, some of y'all ain't catching. It ain't destroyed because somebody claps or don't clap. Because somebody say amen, don't say amen. Because ladies wear pants, don't wear pants. It ain't destroyed because you got one song leader, two song leader, three song leader, four song leader. It ain't destroyed because of that. It's destroyed because you're not producing. Last time I checked, Galatians 5, 22 through 23 lets us know what the fruit is. The fruit of the Spirit, which has nine qualifications that are in that one fruit. And if you're not producing all nine qualifications, then you ain't got the fruit. See, we've gotten things confused. But see, there's a problem, y'all, why we can't grow. Why can't we grow? Because we have too many church folk and not Christians in the Bible. See, I can talk about the folk in Plano. Why? Because I've been there five years and I've gone to hell and back with them. I talk about folk I know why because some of their cousins go here. So I won't talk about them so you know I'm also talking about you. Uh-huh. And when churches try to start growing, Moving towards things that are more biblical, you always face resistance. See, see, I'm tired of fussing with folk over change, over stuff that Jesus said to do. So y'all know what I did? I went and started my own 501c3, my own nonprofit, where I am the CEO. And everybody on my board, I got a few folk from the church. Nobody in leadership. Why? Because you need that separation of church and state so that when I get that federal money, amen, there is no conflict of interest. Amen. 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 Lord have mercy. Lord, they don't understand. Everybody else do it. I need to learn and do it too. And so I developed this because I got tired of fussing about folk not wanting to help with an after-school program, not wanting to do a summer camp, not wanting to feed the hunt. I ain't got time for all that mess. I started my own thing. We got a contract with the church where we paid them rent to use the building. But because of all that, we baptized last year over 125 people. Not because of the church, but because of the Avenue F Family Enrichment Corporation of Texas Incorporated, Effect Inc., which I am the CEO. Amen. I utilize it to bless the church. Some of y'all look at me like y'all know what I'm talking about. We have a free summer camp that we give off every year for the last two years. First year we had about 35 kids. Last year we had about 65 kids. And because of that, we were feeding them breakfast, lunch, and a snack. We took them on field trips. We sat there and did academic stuff, athletic things with them. And because of that, we baptized kids beyond number every year. 
But because we got those kids in, we also got their parents. But some folk were hating on us using the bill every day. But I was glad God sent me in contact with somebody from this congregation where the summer camp just won't be the month of July, but it'll be the whole summer because of a connection through the Mountain View congregation. Now I have a feeding program from June 4th to August 24th, so now I don't have to come out my own pocket paying for food. Food's being provided, so now I can help kids in other ways for a long period of time. Why? Because it's about kingdom business. Some folk had an issue with us having a Halloween block party. Yes, I said it, Halloween block party. We turned the building into a haunted house. We had the whole street shut down. We, had, we played cakewalk. We had the fire department out there, the police station. We gave immunization shots. We did a whole bunch of stuff. Folk were mad. Some folk didn't show up. Some folk were sitting there, that ain't what the church need to do, celebrating Halloween, celebrating devils. But every holiday came from a Greek yeah. God. And last time I checked, a Greek God is an idol. So you don't even understand about Easter. That came from the God Esther, which is a Greek God. But you want to celebrate Resurrection Sunday morning when you should celebrate it every Sunday. But you don't know your own history, but you're mad because I passed out some candy. But over 300 non-members of the Church of Christ came through, saw what we were doing. And on that next Sunday, we had over 50 of them sitting in service. Well, we have baptized some of them today. All because I gave out some candy? But you mad? I don't care. I don't care you man. Why? Because right now we got to deal with Baylor Hospital where they opening up a clinic in our church, paying for a farmer's market and an after school program, all because I wanted to drive from Forney, Texas to Plano, Texas to give my time to help some kids. It don't matter if you don't like it. God go bless me with devil's money, godly money, all money, because all money is God's money. Do you want to be the body? I told Jamel, you go start this 501c3. Yeah. And you go bring some more funds down this way that's going to bless the kingdom. Because yes, after our deal is finalized and everything running smooth with Baylor, who y'all think we going to send Baylor to next? Uh -huh. right. We the first church. We ain't going to be the last church they work with. <laughs> well, well, Baylor's Baptist, ain't it? When you get sick. <laughs> Where's my boy at? Where he at? Where my reason? Where he at? In the back. Like, what did you call that? A hypocrite. Wait on your Church of Christ Hospital. <laughs> and we gonna say ashes to ashes and dust to dust. <laughs> Where your Church of Christ grocery store? I mean, come on. <laughs> but we actually have this in our mind as though we doing what's right. But the head is telling the body what to do, but we don't want to do what the head said to do. Our churches are going to start doing what the head says to do. Because some folks say, well, you've lost some members from Avenue F. Yes, I did. But last time I checked, we've gained more than we lost. And if we lost you because we want to do the things that are in red that Jesus has said to do, then that lets me know that you were not a sheep, but a goat. Examine yourself today and find out, are you a sheep or a goat? When the leadership presents this to you all, are y'all going to support them? Because don't forget, when you don't support the leadership, you're not going against the leadership. You're going against. See, see, see we got to understand these type things, y'all. This is a building. This building is not the church. Right. If you think this building is the church, then that lets me know you are not a sheep. You are a goat. Because last time I checked, the sheep are 
the church. What are you willing to do to help this body, this part of the body, start doing what the head has called you to do? See, if you're not a member of the blood-bought institution, the body of Christ, we beg and plead with you to become one. Why? Because you may be doing a good work right now, but you're not getting credit. Why would you want to do a good work and not get credit for it? That's like going to school, taking a test, turning in the quizzes, turning in all the homework, but you ain't in the class. You just showing up. Where at graduation time, they're going to look at you and say, you never enrolled. Why, why, why would you want to do that? That don't make sense. Give your life to Christ today. Be added to the body and let the head tell you what you're supposed to do. If you're not a member of the blood-bought institution, you come by hearing, believing, repenting of your sins, confessing with your mouth, then being buried in the watery grave of baptism, you'll come up a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things will be passed away. Behold, all things will become new. If you are a member of the body of Christ, have you been acting spiritually par quadriplegic? Ask God to put motion back in you. See, that's repentance, making that change. You can't do it on your own, but God has the ability to do it. Why? Because God can just speak it, and it'll happen. What is it that you need from God today? Whatever it is you need, while the blood is running warmly and freely in your veins, we'll give you the opportunity. As together we stand. This message was brought to you by Mountain View Church of Christ. Visit our website at mtvclc.org for more information about what we're doing and how you can be involved in ministry and spreading the word of God. Believe. Become. Belong. Come out to the Mountain View Church of Christ. mtvclc.org.